Hey, we're Emily and Ty from CCM Magazine and 94 from The Fish. We're here tonight at the Dove Awards with the Newsboys. Welcome, guys. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. It's fantastic. It's the Dove Awards. It's the 45th annual. Almost as old as, well, I won't say who's that old. <laughs> Not as old as me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it like being here? You know what? I love the Doves. The Doves to me, I mean, we've played a few of them over the years and be involved. And it's just one of those wonderful moments where you get to see, for me anyway, you get to see uh, a lot of the bands you don't you typically get to see. And I, just, I mean, I've uh, been a fan of Amy Grant. I got to see her and, and hug her neck, and that was wonderful. And they, then all these other bands that I've known for years. So for me, it's like a, it's like a, it's family time. You know, it's awesome. I love it. Now, of course, this isn't your all's first time at the Doves. What would you say is your favorite memory that you've had over the years at the Doves? I have a couple. Um, this is not my first rodeo, as you said. <laughs> you made it very clear. Again, thanks a lot. Um, no. um, years ago, DC Talk, I played on a song called Colored People. I played guitar. That song years ago. Uh, and I, I think I bossed it pretty good. But that was fun for what it was. And I would have to say, um, as crazy as it sounds tonight, Tonight was fun. Gossip is one of my favorite songs. We started with the big bang on the lift. I thought it was fantastic. I had a great time. Speaking of God's Not Dead, I mean, that song has just, it just keeps speaking a, volumes. I know. It will not die. <laughs> it, it's, it, that thing's a, just such a juggernaut. I mean, we, we actually, re, what, three years ago yeah, now, right? Mike? Yeah. Yeah. We released that record, and we released a record about a year ago. And there was so much momentum behind the God's Not Dead branding that it just steamrolled out <laughs> record. And uh, not many people got to, I mean, it's a good problem to have. Um, and, uh, you know, not many people even get the chance to have something that that, that, that that massive. But, you know, doing the song, that was the first hit. And then when the movie came along, it just put, uh, just put wind in the sails of this thing. And this thing is just, I think it's gone beyond pretty much what everyone everyone was expecting and it's been a really pleasant surprise and it's just wonderful for Pure Flix and the, and the brandy but great for Newsboys too so we're, we're stoked. Now of course we'll of course we'll get to the movie in just a moment but I wanted to ask what is the story let's go all the way back to the beginning of God's Not Dead what was the story behind that song? Well the song came from one of my good friends Daniel Bastia he had cut it and it kind of went you know it didn't, it didn't, go, it didn't make the impact he wanted to, to go to make it. So uh, I know David Crowder, another good friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, he cut it, and he called it um, Like a Lion. And we had the idea to call it God's Not Dead, get my partner from DC Talk, Kevin Maxing, on, on it with us. And uh, we was really focused on trying to make God's Not Dead the, um, the center of the song, more than Like a Lion. Yeah. And I think that gave believers more of a, a rally cry, yeah, uh, to, to, to get behind. And what really got us, Han Duncan, is how the kids resonated with it. The kids absolutely, like I'm talking like seven-year-olds to like nine, 12-year-olds. It's like they're crazy about it. And what better way to get kids involved in Christian music, get them to Christian music, than to say God's not dead. And the lion part, ah, you know? What's that whole experience like, just seeing that song, you know, you wrote it, and like you're talking about, you thought it was going to be born like a lion, God's not dead, that focus, and then seeing it just, Hit the big screen, just that whole entire experience. It's it's almost surreal when you are involved in recording a song, releasing it on a record, and you of course you do, you hope to have success so you can keep on doing what you do. But this thing just went kaboom. I mean it, it's and it's still I think it's still got incredible momentum. Yeah, sort of it five just, just recently went to D V D and I heard there were some crazy numbers right. as far as D V D sales in you know, places like Walmart and uh, Kmart and all those different outlets. So I think people have really I, I think the movie, it, it's a subject that a lot of people have actually dealt with or are dealing with is this, you know, when you get into high levels of education, they basically said, well, let's get this out of the way. We've got to take God out of the picture and th so we can teach you what we want, want to teach you. And uh, it's incredibly, uh, this incredible li liberal agenda. So there's, you know, uh, there, there's stats out there that 50% of the people or 60, 50 to 60% of, of, of U.S. citizens claim to be Christians. So... Yep. They're basically, you know, 50% of college kids, kids are going, well, hang on, I know I want to do really good at this grade, but I, I can't resonate with that. And I think what the movie has done is it's empowered them to kind of stand yes. up for their faith and just say, you know what, no, I'm not going to stand up for this. And it's, it's definitely ruffling a lot of feathers, and I think Hollywood didn't see it coming, Mike. I think they, they were like, oh, That's my cool. gosh, what? We, they never saw this coming. So I think you'll probably see a lot of more faith-based uh, movies Hallelujah. coming out of Hollywood. <laughs> now, what has it meant to you guys as a band to, you know, obviously you play to um, 
a predominantly Christian crowd, but to have a movie like God's Not Dead to be as well received as it has been and to cause so much conversation, you know, not just within the Christian community. Put it this way, we played Winter Jam a few times. The last time we played it was last year. Uh, we played in front of 450,000 people over three months, three and a half months, four months. The movie, in three weeks, we played to 6.8 million people. We can see an arena every night, and we never have that many people. That said, the movie has impact outside the church. Uh, people can bring their friends. The theater's not threatening. Churches are a lot of times. I'm um, not saying it's a bad thing, but the fact is most believers understand the church setting. Non-believers understand theaters. Um, that said, it has had a major impact, and um, it's, 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 it's spoken for itself. Has that sort of opened the door that you feel like uh, that maybe in the future we'll be seeing more? No, movies? two ways about it. We're working on two more movies as we speak. Can't tell you the titles of them yet because we're not sure what they're going to be called, <laughs> but they're coming out. <laughs> okay, you heard it here. Yeah, you heard it here, CCM. There it is. <laughs> Thank you guys for sitting down to talk with us. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. boys, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Don't leave me hanging, dog. Come on now. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you guys. Have a great Bye. night. Yeah.